Hello and welcome to this episode of the Digital Disruption Podcast brought to you by Novus Strategy and Consulting with Pete Gatenby and myself, Chris Williams. In today's episode, we're going to be talking about vertical fragmentation and the impact that this has and the friction that it causes in the home buying process across the ecosystem and across all actor groups, whether you're a vendor, lender, property firm, this impacts everybody. So let's get into it. Hello, Pete. Hello, mate. How are you? All good. We are outside again, which I feel will be our final podcast episode as we th- try to take be. in this uh, sun at five past five on a Friday evening uh, for the first time in September. So this will probably be the last one. Yep. Um, we've got a couple of things that we want to touch on first before we get into the topic of this. Yep. Newsletter. Newsletter. Big news come in in September this year. Um, yeah, we're launching a newsletter. A physical newsletter. I was about to say, what is the difference of this hold. newsletter compared to most newsletters across all industry sectors? This is a physical newsletter yep. being posted out. And why is probably the question that some people are going to ask. Um, well, first of all, I think we've all got a little bit digital. We're on a digital disruption podcast, and actually I quite like holding something physical every now and then <laughs> is the uh, first reason. But, but second of all, it kind of, I think it's... Uh, Things get lost in our inboxes quite yeah. often. Uh, we get distracted. We've got a thousand notifications. I've got notifications popping off now at 5 p.m. on a Friday. Um, and it's so easy to get distracted when we're looking at something that's actually quite high value. And so we wanted to make it physical, allow it to sit on people's desks, to pick it up in between meetings and, you know, wherever you like to read your writings, readings, um, you can read it wherever you want. Good. I'm quite excited about this. Um, The idea of it is very much to provide people with high value insights into what's happening with the digital transformations taking place across the home buying sector. It's completely unbiased. Uh, It's there to bring insights and help and share, uh, obviously, the intelligence that we have and that we share Uh, with clients but more broadly so if you're interested in getting access to the newsletter somewhere around this video stroke podcast uh, there'll be a link that you can go and register your details and it will be posted to you it's a monthly newsletter monthly newsletter that's correct and the first one will be out towards the end of september yeah yeah it's in its Uh, final throws of being produced so that's great Uh, we won't give a tease of what's in the first uh, in the first one uh, but yes, that's the that, that's the first bit of news. Now, getting into the topic of today's podcast, yep. talk to me a little bit about why this topic, why now? So the topic for today is vertical fragmentation. It's on the tip of a lot of our customers and people we interact with in the marketplace as tongues at the moment. There's lots of technology out there that's being deployed and the biggest thing that people are trying to answer at the moment is how do we connect all these different elements in the process. Mm -hmm. What they're describing is fragmentation. And when we look at the market as a whole, that that home buying market in the UK, we see it. It's vertically fragmented at each part of the process. So when we talk about that, we talk about looking for a house in the first instance. You might go to right move. Everything's quite fragmented. You then go to the estate agent to go view the house. You then got to give them more information. And then you go to your mortgage broker, get more information. It's such a fragmented process. Yeah. And I think it's important to talk about, as we have done historically, how that's become fragmented. So what we yeah. refer to as vertical is the vertical access. So it, yep. as what happens in all industry sectors, this market, the, 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 the process is actually a, a horizontal process. Yep. But the elements of it have been di- uh, digitally ver- um Digitized. digitized vertically, yep. get my words out. And the impact of that has been this fragmentation. There's been a positive element to what's happened, but fundamentally, yep. if there's one metric everybody can agree on, it's the average transaction time. Yep. And the average transaction time hasn't ever reduced. In fact, it's actually probably got a little bit higher. Yeah, yeah. Thus, if we've introduced all this digitalization, what benefit is it actually bring? Now, it's brought a level of value, mm. but it's actually brought also this level of friction so we want to kind of hone into this and we're going to look at it holistically we're not just going to look at it through one lens what through the lender lens or anything else we're going to look at it holistically and the key takeouts from this are all going to be about how everybody in this industry now should start to be looking at interoperability yep. because this is the big opportunity for all players whether you're yep. a vendor lender law firm whatever role you play this is where the opportunity is so let's start to sort of dig into those sort of first bits 
So when we look at it horizontally, we call it horizontal digital integration. HDI. HDI. Why is there a need now for the market to move to a HDI or horizontal digitally integrated? The reason that people need to move to it fundamentally is to improve the customer experience. I mean, that is it, it is the kind of straight line answer. Yeah. It, everybody that's providing a service in this sector is ultimately providing a service to an end consumer, which is the, the home buyer or seller. So the reason that we have got this category now of HDI is the fact that everybody in this ecosystem needs to start looking left and right. Nobody can act fundamentally in isolation. Well, you can, but if you continue to do so, you are essentially going to be losing competitive advantage. So as we've said before, we are now in the second phase of digital transformation in this market, and it is mission critical for all players to start to collaborate and look at how they can actually integrate horizontally. And so wherever you sit in the ecosystem, you've got to start doing that. Number one, fundamentally to improve customer experience. Two, by improving customer experience, you're maintaining your position in the marketplace. You're opening yourself up to broader opportunities, broader commercial opportunities, as well as broader collaboration opportunities. And everybody really in this sector, no doubt as a commercial entity, wants to develop and evolve and grow their business. Well, in order to do that, it's great if you're an existing incumbent player to begin to leverage your own distribution. So to leverage that distribution, and what I mean by leveraging that distribution is if you've got existing customers, if you've got existing suppliers, but you're not interconnected left and right of where you sit in the process, you can actually begin to leverage the distribution that you have in order to improve that customer experience by sharing and collaborating with people left and right of you in the process. And that's going to improve your commercial uh, proposition, commercial provide commercial ad- uh, advantages, but, and it all comes from improving that customer experience. There's lots more things I could probably start to delve into, but at a high level, I hope that that's enough to get people thinking about this. Yeah, I think there's possibly a couple of other pieces as well. We've got the element of improving efficiency end-to-end, yep. which actually, when you start to think about the lending process, you've got people in the lending process waiting to complete for sometimes 200 days. It's a huge amount of time. The world changes a lot in 200 days, especially when we're talking about the demographics that are moving house yeah. and buying property at the moment. Life changes fast in 200 days. Some of them might even have children that they didn't know they were having at the beginning of the process. And we know that, that we know that within that 150 to 200 days, there's a 30% fallout rate. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, this is what I refer to as the commercial. I mean, if we start to look yeah. at the data, it tells us a story. So, kind of not embracing this really is a, is, is a foolish move in my view. Yeah, yeah. There's also the ability for better decision decision making. Yeah. If we're integrated up upstream, downstream, then actually you can make better decisions about what's happening. Mm. That could be a better lending decision, or it could be a better decision about uh, it could even be underwriting or whatever it could be. It allows you to make a better decision because you're collaborating upstream yep. and also downstream. I think also, and it, you know, this is for all kind of act players in the market, irrelevant of your size it actually will start to introduce new product opportunities. Yep. You know, if we take certain lenders, for example, not all, you've got specialist lenders and then you've got kind of your kind of quite vanilla volume type lenders. You know, if you're a lender that's perhaps in the more specialist area, the more that you can do from an integration standpoint means that you'll be able to offer better levels of product. If you're mass volume lending, if you can kind of get those decisions done quicker, if you yep. can move them through the process quicker, that's better. If we look further down, upstream, downstream, towards where the consumer goes to look at the property, goes to view the property, then goes into the process of brokers and everything else, the more that you can do in this area to interconnect, you can actually start to increase much better levels of customer experience, which means that you can offer better products and services, yeah. better value. So this is a huge opportunity, uh, and one I'd invite everybody to kind of start to get their heads around and, and, and begin to leverage. So from an implementation standpoint then, what can we practically do, what can actors do in the process um, to really... So let's break down some of these these walls that might exist. I think the first thing to do is actually do a bit of a, a, a mapping exercise to look mm. at existing technologies and existing systems and start to score them in terms of their capability around interoperability. Yeah. Um, what I mean by that is, is that if you can look at what you've already got, 
look at who sits left and right of you in the process and how you can transition and pass information between you and how that fundamentally can impact the customer experience that should help start to build a picture of who you can then thirdly begin to collaborate with yep. and that's really where to start with this now there's a whole process to go through and i think we won't have the time in this single podcast to kind of go through it all but that's where you want to be starting in simple practical terms map out the process number one two start to look at where there's levels of interoperability that can be introduced and three as you look left and right of that who are the collaborative partners that you can start to get involved in yeah. now as you zoom out and look holistically across the ecosystem there are there are pockets of activity that are now taking place that are getting traction you've got the opda and what's happening there with the data we've seen that in recent weeks there's pilots that you know some of which we've been involved in have come to have come to light yep. whereby they are now really testing these hypotheses and using that data there's there's organizations that are out there that are actively in inviting collaboration that's the way to do this and to start to look at it so if you can do those first three things then zoom out and look holistically and look at who's doing what and where you can start to work with them that's where practically you can start to make a difference and the the, the final bit i would add to this as well pete is often i found when you go to sort of industry events sometimes and you might talk to say smaller organizations that don't have big technology teams or don't really have yeah. an innovation or technology true, teams yeah. they seem to feel a little bit like sat on the side now i've got a message for them you don't have to sit on the side. you don't need big tech teams to do this stuff you don't need to be building the tech you can actively participate in influencing how this happens if you start to collaborate and start to go to these things. So what I would invite those organizations to do is to carve out innovation time. Innovation time doesn't mean to say that you've got a bunch of people coding. You, know, you can leverage artificial intelligence capabilities now to yeah. build temporary proof of concepts and applications for you. That's a whole other podcast. But there's things that you can be doing and I just invite people just to get involved wherever you sit no matter how big or small you are, get involved in this because it is happening and it's happening quickly. Absolutely, Chris. I think it's a really interesting point because if we look at the market now, you can see that vendors are moving. They're spotting this movement in the market towards the HDI yeah. and uh, are really starting to, to adopt it and to, to, to invest in technology that's available to the marketplace. Large players, small players, the vendors are making it available uh, to, to, to all. Um, actually leads us nicely on to, to another piece of work that we've been doing um, really around benchmarking some of the technologies in some of these vertical yeah. elements in the process um, and we've, we're benchmarking the technologies that exist we're going to try and do it across the industry it's not going to just be any one particular vertical that we're going to focus on but the very first one that we're doing that's again coming coming out in the next um, weeks and months is uh, we're focusing on the conveyancing technology market and really benchmarking all the technology that's available there on a number of metrics but AI is definitely one of those fundamental parts um, as you mentioned but also how does it integrate across the uh, yeah. across the, the horizontal digital integration and the purpose of that work again is, is to provide a holistic picture but also an agnostic picture of kind of you know those in market players to sort of give people uh, insights to that and that, that that'll be released out to uh, towards the uh, towards mid-autumn it's currently placed for at the moment that's an important benchmarking exercise let, let, let me turn to a, a couple of other bits uh, in relation to this now let's look at real world examples of organizations businesses who are adopting the principles that we've kind of set out in kind of hdi or horizontal digital integration you know can you give us some sort of case studies of, of what we can see? Absolutely, Chris. Um, a really good example would be Zoopla, online property search portal uh, that is well known in the industry. Um, now they offer and integrate with a number of mortgage brokers. So when you find that perfect house uh, that you've perhaps contacted the estate agent that is looking after that property on behalf of the seller, um, the next thing that they do is connect you to mortgage broker service and to allow you to go and search for the best mortgage deal given your uh, given your situation your scenario um, obviously immediately breaks down the silo between property search and mortgage search and so you straight away uh, breaking down that silo absolutely and a, a good one for me leading on from that is one that's been recently announced uh, from LMS uh, Connell's um, 
uh, and a couple of partners that they're involved with, they've launched a pilot to kind of demonstrate how taking upfront data can actually, uh, and reusable ID can, at the start of the process from the estate agency um, bit going all the way through into the law firm. Yeah. Uh, they've got a pilot running at the moment. That's a classic example of horizontal digital integration. Yeah. And their, their actual pilot is being run to demonstrate and prove, look, this will this reduce the time to exchange? Uh, and that's another great example of an organization or a group of organizations sort of looking at this and leveraging that. And that kind of you know leads neatly on from, from, yeah. from yours. I think there's another one there as well, isn't there? And Nationwide have done some stuff. Uh, again, you know, it's a start, but it's just another live example of this. And um, and theirs is more to do with um, tracking the application process. Tracking the applications, that's it, yeah. yeah. And I think that if you just take those kind of three-wheel world examples, then if you start to expand that out, you can begin to imagine yep. the art of the possible here. You and see what where I, the map is going. You can see where it's going. Yeah. And this is the thing for me that, that, that I think that... I get quite excited. We all get excited about it, but it's great to see that there's organisations out there that are actually doing this. So I think, yeah, there's, there's some great examples there. Yeah, absolutely. Right, I think that's a good place to kind of end this. We could go on about it for ages, but I think the key takeouts from this episode really are, number one, horizontal digital integration yep. is a thing. It's happening. It's, here. it's a phrase that we sort of coined to help the market understand really what this is. And we've covered off you know, the practical steps that people yep. can take, why it's important and how it's going to impact them across the industry sector. Uh, we've given some real world examples of some use cases of how yep. this is being sort of leveraged and looked at now and the pace for which this is sort of happening. And I think all that remains to be said really some sort of from our side is, is that there's an open invitation really from us to say if there's anything that we're talking about here that you think you know what, I'd really like some more intelligence and insight into this and how yeah. I could apply this to to my organization you know especially if you're in the lending community uh, then get in touch you know we'd be more than happy to have conversations and share some of the intelligence that we have around this and how, how it can help you but I think um, for now Unless you have anything to add, my friend, I think that's this episode wrapped. No, it's Friday evening. I might want to leave you to your uh, zero-calorie beverage, <laughs> unbranded. <laughs> it has to be unbranded <laughs> because we don't want to get into trouble with a certain manufacturer. Anyway, interesting they used to do a lot of work with, but let's not get into that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> anyway, that concludes this episode of the Digital Disruption Podcast brought to you by Nova Strategy and Consulting. As we've said, if you're interested in the newsletter, click on the link, uh, provide your information, and that will be sent to you on a monthly yep. basis with the first... Um, I was going to say episode then, but it's not an episode, is it? If it's a physical news, First letter. edition, I think. The first edition will be finding its way to your uh, letterbox uh, in the not-too-distant future towards the end of September. If you want to get access also to the uh, analyst work that's being carried out in and around the vendor market and what's coming for, for the conveyancing angle, again, if you just get in touch with us, we can add you to the distribution list uh, in relation to that. But for now, thanks for tuning in. And as ever, if you want to get in touch, connect with us on LinkedIn or follow us on the usual channels. And don't forget to like and subscribe. But for now, thanks for tuning in and we'll be back again soon. Thanks a lot.